my intention with this was to um, have this be um, just a way to, you know, to share outside of the, the group of folks who were together in Wyoming uh, a while ago, um, both because not everybody's able to go, but also a little bit to share some information about the future. Uh, we'll be back again next summer in, in, in some format or another. Um, so uh, we wanted to be able to just share uh, uh, some impressions and stories and feelings and a sense of, of, of what the what the Bearing Witness plunge with our Native American elder friends is like. Um, I wrote a short little uh, uh, piece after afterwards that was in the newsletter that uh, hopefully everybody had a chance to see. Uh, so uh, I invited a few of us um, to uh, to talk. Uh, we've got more people from who attended the the plunge um, here on the on the call. So we'll keep this rather loose. Well, I'll we'll, I'll start with um, you know the the small group that I asked to think about this ahead of time. But anybody else who was there afterwards, we we're going to leave some time for for comments or questions and answers or or. Um, other sharing from anybody else that was there. So um, uh, I'll just go ahead and kick off here, and we'll, we'll we'll try to keep each of these, you know, relatively short, five ten minutes at the most, I think, or or however that goes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I hadn't prepared anything, sort of, you know, council style. I wanted to kind of go into this without a thought about it, but but it, it just a, a few minutes ago occurred to me. Um, one of the things that was really profound for me, um, my because of all my background, my my career background, my nature is somewhat organizational and somewhat linear and by the clock and by the agenda and by the schedule. Uh, I've got another nature as well, which I won't tell you too much about, but uh, it's it's quite the opposite of that, and I can go either way, but. In, in in event settings, especially when I'm responsible for it, I tend to def default to the uh, to the uh, the order of order guy, as Angu might say. Um, but that is not how our plunges are, and it is most revealing and most engaging because of that. I mean, we certainly knew where we were going, at least where we were going to be staying. Uh, and we certainly knew that we were going to assemble, you know, the, the night before and chat. And uh, But each we didn't have a written out schedule. Uh, nobody really had a, a full agenda for the week. And, um, <clears throat> and we made decisions and uh, Ingo and Genru uh, and, and the elders uh, uh, sort of set the tone for the next day each day, and 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 we messaged one another about when to when to meet in the morning. But nobody <laughs> knew ahead of time where we were going or what we we're going to be doing exactly. Uh, perhaps with the exception of the the day we went to the medicine wheel. And uh, in in, a, in addition to that, um, things changed. Um, in fact, you know, one of the days we had a, 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 a very esteemed, uh, wonderful guest speaker, two speakers really, and 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 our idea was that they would arrive on one day. If I, my memory probably fails me here, but uh, or perhaps around noon or in the morning, and uh, they arrived the next day <laughs> in the afternoon. And um, what was remarkable about this, and someone else with more experience with plunges and bearing witness retreats, maybe maybe we'll speak to this. I don't know. Was I didn't have, I can't recall anybody asking. You know what's going on? <laughs> what are we going to do next? When are we going to start? Um, how come this didn't happen when it was supposed to happen? It was 30 plus fully grown adults who probably live by their watch and their timetable and their 
calendar on a, on a regular basis who all collectively suspended that for a week. And it was beautiful. It was, um, it was, it was just beautiful that way, just to be able to let go as a group together. Um, um, I was charmed by that and, and really moved. That was, that was, that was Dharma. Um, uh, and I really appreciated that. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and pass here. And, um, uh, if anybody's ginger, maybe I'll call on, on, on you if you'd like to go next. Yeah. Okay, let me unmute. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lisa Maria Sonia. <laughs> My flute sister, she is. <laughs> so everybody knows. Um, okay, so I think my experience, I mean, I thought about it a little bit and then just said, you know, how am I going to sum up the whole week, you know, with the word, with the word, just the word. Um, and then for me, I think the word surprise is like how I felt coming out of the whole, whole um, experience. I think, um, you know, surprise there's no Wi-Fi, <laughs> which is the most amazing thing that ever happened to all of us. We're just like, okay, first day, we just, uh, where, where, you know, we try to find that location where we can get that signal. And then second day, I think everybody just gave up, just whatever. We just go with the flow and, and it's just the best thing. You know, I slept like 12 hours a day, every night. Uh, like, I don't need to check my emails. I just, you know, and I think that was like, sort of like a freeing experience, sort of like, was a surprise this, cause you know, Jeff said there is Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, you know, that's a first surprise and then, um, and then I think for me, I walk into the whole experience wanting to be in service. Um, and I think I walk out of it having gifted healing, right? So that's also a surprise for me. You know, I was just saying, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. I'm going to go be in service of, you know, and listen and listen deeply to lessen their suffering. But I think the gift for me, the surprise gift was me for me was to walk out with this amazing realization of a deeper sense of my own trauma related to, you know, what the elders said and the young people. Um, and it's also a privilege for me to be able to sit and struggle in a space of safety, right? Our council, our elders, my friend. Um, that it's just also another surprise for me, like, you know, like feelings that I don't even know that it's deep down inside and it just come bubbling up and, and also be able to sort of almost connect to humanity, you know, family kind of thing. So for me, like the whole situation was surprise, like in terms of what I expected and, and you know what? I walk in with the three tenants. I said, no, just no, don't expect anything. But, you know, it came out to me, like my experience was like really grateful for all the healing that I received and about all the teachings that the elders and the young people sort of give me like a, a sense of hope. And, um, you know, and it, it's really a beautiful experience for me. So you know, whoever's thinking about going next time, I just say, you know, plunge, go to the plunge. And it's, um, and I got to have a privilege to play my flute. My sister, Lisa Marie, who is like, you know, my inspiration of, you know, playing the flute. And she's just I'm glad you're here. And uh, I hope you listen to some of it. You know, Peter took some videos and, you know, in honor of you, my sister. So, um, I'm going to leave it to the next person. So should I name somebody next or Jeff, you're going to do it. Okay. So thank you for having me and, you know, my family. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you, Ginger. And uh, Jitsa Ju, I'll call on you. And then following you, uh, for, so everybody knows, uh, Peter Cunningham uh, took took images uh, while we were together. So after Jitsa Ju, Peter, if you want to go after 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 she, after her that'll be great thanks jeff thanks ginger 
thanks for your flute playing. It was really a, <clears throat> a coming together sort of feeling when you were playing the flute. And uh, um, hi everyone, I'm Jitsu Joe. So in case those who don't know me and um, it's nice to be here. I feel a little nervous trying to talk about that whole plunge because I know, I just know I'm not gonna do it any justice. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna soil the, the beauty of it in some way with my <clears throat> point of view and my words. Uh, so the thing that struck me from the beginning was something that Genro had said. Um, and he, I'm so grateful that he gave me or us or us direction in this way. He said, uh, the elders are going to speak and um, why don't, what, how about, he just recommended that everybody just listen and, uh, and to try to refrain from asking any questions and to just trust that the answers that we seek will will happen in some way that we don't have to kind of um, seek that knowledge that the knowledge will just come through the listening and I'm still really struck by that direction. Uh, it's so profound to me um, because that, that did happen or I'm trusting that it's continuing to happen. And I guess just also noticing my propensity to want this answer and I need to ask this question to get this knowledge. <laughs> to find the answer. And, uh, and so I just love that, you know, backward step of just wait and just listen. And I was, I gave, I talked a little bit about it in a, in a Dharma talk that I gave on Thursday. And when I was talking about uh, bearing witness to uh, Violet and Manny and Wendell and um, Renee. I was just kind of talking about how um, I noticed their ability to just be in not knowing, not not knowing, a, but, but like trust and deep connection with everything that was around them. That was my view of it. And so as I was kind of talking about that in the Dharma talk, all these crows were like, <laughs> and just, you know, coming around the Zen center. And it's sort of like Ginger's flute playing, you know, there's just something so expansive about it. And I also didn't know what it meant. And I remember being on the plunge when that happened, that something about being in the forest or being amongst all of you, I was able to kind of settle into that, but somehow in the talk in the middle of Koreatown in Los Angeles, I could see my grasping of wanting to know, what does that mean? What does it mean? What are the crows trying to say? And and not really giving that the space uh, or the space that it needed. Um, I won't talk too long, but maybe I'll see if there's anything else. Um, Yeah, I know that's really general. Um, I was trying to think if there's something more specific, but nothing's really coming up. Um, 
but I'm happy to share more as, as maybe other people share, maybe something else will arise. Thanks, Jitsa Joe, and, and that's okay. And, 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 and you'll probably have, a, you'll have a chance to speak again too. And <clears throat> it's, it's my own personal notion. So it's, it's just my opinion, but, uh, I, I've never thought, even though there's hundreds, maybe thousands of history books on the shelf behind me, I've never thought that there's any thing as definitive history, that history really is the the collection of all of our perspectives together. I've always liked that idea. So that's what we're doing here. So, you know, no, no one of these pieces is, is complete, uh, but hopefully all of them give kind of a texture. Uh, Peter, would you like to uh, take over and, and show us some, some of your imagery? Yes. Yes, I will. But first, I'm going to tell you to Joe to please interrupt me. You'll get you'll get lots of chances to speak up here. Um, uh, I'm going to run through these pictures fairly quickly, but I would like to be interrupted if these prompt uh, stories or, or reflections along the way from any of you. Um, and uh, the other thing, let's see. So, and you mentioned soiling, soiling, uh, soiling was the word you used. <laughs> So that's so easy to do with, with photography. You can really soil by, pardon, pardon me, Jeff, but by taking a picture, it's an old lesson. It's a word we all use. And, and, and it's kind of a cliche from native culture about stealing souls and so forth. So the, um, I like to think that the, the pictures you're about to see were given to me, but, um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Um, uh, I lost it, but, um, Oh, but the rules of the retreat really treated me kindly here because we all agreed to not do any pictures of anything sacred. So we have no pictures of the uh, ceremony at Medicine, Medicine Wheel or any ceremonial event, which was a, a real gift to me personally because I just stopped making pictures and participated and listened emotionally and with my brain and all that, all that other stuff. Uh, so that said, let me uh, try to share the screen. It's been a while since I've tried Zoom. Uh, I'm going to go fairly quickly until we don't go quickly. So where the hell is it? Let's see. Desktop one. No, oh, that's us. It should, be, it should be in the middle bottom, the share screen in green. Um, it's just here. No, no, he's looking for the file, I think. Photo, oh, photos, maybe it's this. It's this, that was the fool. Okay, so I'm gonna go quickly, please interrupt me. This, this are an, al an alphabetical in time order. So here we go on and we're going on a trip. Ara is, uh, we're in uh, Denver airport and fooling around. They're so traveling and getting there is part of the part of the thing, and uh, it, it. And we were all we were all we 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 were messaging each other. This is a little puddle jumper from uh, in the Billings from Denver. Then we landed on the Fourth of July and uh, got to meet meet the people of Billings. And this is us arriving in our motel where nobody was wearing masks. It was very shocking for, for us from the East Coast. And then we traveled and went through towns like this one where they fetishize the native history. That was a bear we met on the street. Uh, that is uh, somebody. Um, he's had, enjoying his first day off in several years. So I'm noticing you might, I'm going to reduce all the pictures of us over here on, on the right of my screen. And then I'm just, this, these are self-explanatory. This is our first day. Oopsie. That's me. Yeah, yeah thank you. You guys speak up with the information here. That was a great picture of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody heard from Wendell since? Yeah, I, I talk to Wendell once or twice a week. 
Oh, oh, I'd like to talk to you about that afterwards. You know, Wendell wrote an Emancipation Proclamation for Native Americans. He retranslated it. He's uh, the, the, uh, among the elder group that that we are close with. He's the youngest, and I, I couldn't tell you how old he is. He's done so much in his life, but I gather maybe he's 55. I don't know, uh, 50, 55. Uh, but he's very much in a leader. He's turning 60 this year. Mm -hmm. He's turning 60. Ah, OK. <laughs> There's a the question. <laughs> There's Violet. So this is the afternoon session of the first day, I think. Having the children there with us was wonderful. How much did we pay them to be there? <laughs> so, Peter, as you're going along, I would like to just name the elders. Oh, that'd be great. Please speak up. Manny Iron Horse, mm -hmm. Wendell Yellow Bull, Violet Catches, Renee Iron Horse, Arvel Looking Horse, and Paula Looking Horse. And elder in training is Claudia Iron Horse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yes, yeah, please say the names when they show up. Oh, what's this? Oh my. Will they ever stop? <laughs> there are deep teachings going on here. Please, come on, stop, no can do. That's enough. <laughs> I didn't learn a thing. We had, this is when we put our shoes on backwards and had a clown parade. Our, so our shoes were reversed on the reverse foot. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> and then I think this is traveling our second day, I think going to Medicine Wheel. Oops. Somehow we got back to the, this is where we stayed. It was a culture shock to come home every night. <laughs> this is going out the next morning the medicine wheel and there, there's an observatory on the top because it's the closest place to the stars for <clears throat> in, in ancient times and still now it's the same relationship as on Mauna Kea where there's a telescope and it's a sacred traditional place the medicine wheel, I think, was about 9,600 feet elevation. So we were just, I think, just above tree line. Or maybe right at tree line. We mostly, most of us walked up from the parking lot below. This is the temple at Medicine Wheel, <laughs> otherwise known as the toilet, the only building on the premises. Hmm. Thank you, Ola. So this is my only picture from from there, from that spot. The uh, ceremony took place to the left of us here, and we also sat in a circle before that, right behind where I'm standing. And now we're coming down. And there was snow. And someone made a snowman. Does anybody know who made that? And after this, we all gathered at a park. It was very nice to sit and talk with the people who had just done the ceremonies with, for us, with us. And they fed us. We were invited by them, and they fed us elk stew and and lots of other yummy things. I liked how the elders called Genro the Genro. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a that's a gentleman Genro. <laughs> uh, I believe that that feeding us was part of the ceremony because that was the give back, and so that also was a gathering after we had done the holy work. Wow! And it ended with a with a circle of council. It did. The gentleman on the right is Cedric Brokennose, uh, and he was uh, he was why we were able to attend the ceremony at the Medicine Wheel. Um, uh, Manny uh, Ironhawk reached out to him, and he was the organizer of the ceremony. And um, uh, he he wasn't he didn't participate in the ceremony, but but the the event prior, he was sort of the the master of the program. Uh, we had a circle prior to the the the, uh, the medicine wheel event, and I think Cedric. I sat and chatted with him. Uh, I think he would uh, describe himself as sort of elder in training as well. Maybe that's not the right language, but but he's he's younger too. But he was really really powerful and just a beautiful beautiful man. And uh, and uh, he they the group included. Not just uh, Lakota, but Northern Cheyenne, Crow, uh, I think some Shoshone people, and maybe some Arapaho people too. And and the man in the middle is the as the senior elder of the yes. group. This is the next day. Ah, what's going on there? Inai? Inai was reading Pokemon. That's Violet. That was Violet telling one of her wonderful stories, her grandmother's stories. Yeah. So on the first day, just to kind of give an overview to folks who weren't with us, on the first day, we really prepared. We got together and first of all, introduced everyone in the group uh, and, and kind of broke the ice, sort of. Um, and uh, listen to stories but then we we prepared for the ceremony which was on the second day um and we prepared by tying prayer bundles tobacco ties that would be that would be offered up on the medicine wheel during the ceremony and and so the the good the better part of the afternoon was spent doing that in in where we saw earlier in that kind of lodge and um and then the second day we were up on the medicine wheel um, all day doing doing that ceremony and then and then going to the campground and, and eating and and uh, and then this is the third day when we were really kind of processing and having you know there was some explanation about what we had been doing that previous day and as well as telling stories related to it. That's Renetta and Rowdy. Wow. With, with Manny. Here, yeah. explain this one, no can do. What's going on? He's disappearing. He, it's can I entering? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you teach him this trick? I did. I, he's entering <laughs> emptiness. <laughs> And that's Arval looking horse. And his wife Paula to to Arla. His wife Paula, yeah. His his energy is one of the most present people I have ever experienced. And I've had 
audiences with the Dalai Lama, it rivals that in a very different sort of way. Yeah, yeah I second that. I, I wasn't sure who he was, but when he was speaking, I was like, who is this? <laughs> Paula was pretty uh, mm -hmm. fierce as well. I, I managed to get the necessary courage to ask him to if I could make pictures while he was there. And he said, graciously said yes, but as long as you don't make me the Indian on Facebook. <laughs> that is an incredible picture, Peter. Yeah. That, thank you. That's my favorite picture of the trip, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope he gets this picture. Somebody should, should make that happen. He was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Ah, here we are back at the lodge. And Jitsu Joe, this is the moment we all got that terrible cold. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> yeah. no. Everything's your fault. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then the next day. The next day we went to Fort Phil Kearney. <laughs> um, we came down off the mountain and went back to this place, Fort Phil Kearney, which was uh, the site where there had been a battle. Um, and the fort and Phil Kearney um, were overrun. now made <laughs> permanent in little figurines and we sat and and spoke and listened again under the one shade tree which was very small because it was hot that day boy off the mountain it was about 15 degrees hotter the mountains and the valley behind you are is is the location of that you can read books about the military history of what went on right there. You took this picture because Wendell told you to always catch him when he was doing expansive gestures, right? That's true. That was funny. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> this is our land. <laughs> I shouldn't share this, but I did tell him, I did what you said, Wendell, but you, your bet when you do that, your belly is often sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this he one laughed. Hey, I love, love that guy. <laughs> they have this 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 is supposedly the fort but when you walk behind this it's like disney world there's nothing there uh oh here comes here oh. comes all right motel owner oh dear <laughs> this is the uh next day no the out of that afternoon yeah that we went afternoon, to another we went to a different another battle site. another battle site and this was a we, we actually didn't end up talking much about it, but it was a site where there was a massacre of Lakota uh, people. And, and it was supposedly when right around when the army began to employ massacring non-combatants as, as a strategy. But it was a beautiful spot right down by the winding river and Claudia really opened up that day and told us, spoke to us at length, and that was really touching. I've been quoting her in my conversations up here on this fishing island. She she goes to college uh, at a state Minnesota state school, and and many people are studying Native 
Native history. She's, she's the real deal from the reservation whose parents actually do the ceremonies. And she said that this, the, her fellow students kind of make fun of her for being from the, from the poor part of town. She wasn't an urban person, when in fact, she's the one that's actually practicing what they're studying. Well, and she also described how that even happens on their reservation, on, on the Cheyenne River mm -hmm. Reservation, that there, there is a part of the reservation where more traditional people live, mm -hmm. and that they're kind of, um, yeah, bullied by, you know, um, less traditional. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Don't go and then to this, And then this happened. I don't know where this came from or who this guy was. But I'm going to take two minutes and show you this little bit. I like to wear a mask. Huh? So one of the traditions at our factory where there's 250 Latino women is on their birthday, I go and sing them happy birthday. And the unfortunate part of it is that my harmonica, this is a one song harmonica, like a one trick pony. It only knows one song. Okay. Yeah. Don't look. Don't other it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't it it. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, don't you cry for me. We cleared that park out pretty quick. Get that going, and they, it's a happy birthday song in English. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, eso no es el, la canción de feliz cumpleaños, Michelle. And I say, yes, it is, it is. And so now they've taught their children. And we have like thousands of people on Long Island who think, oh, Susanna, is a happy birthday song. It only plays one song. So then I tell them, but ask me to play any song for you. <laughs> Their way to heaven. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Foolishness, total foolishness. Oh, yeah. and, and yeah. here is your student. No, who, my teacher, my teacher. Here's your teacher, excuse me, who didn't play anything when he arrived. It sounds good. It sounds good. Beautiful, beautiful, freaking beautiful. Yeah, that harmonica lives with him now. <laughs> it does? Oh, that's great. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and here, the next, this is what? The next day? I'm confused. This no, is the same day. Yeah, this is the last day when we went to a, a beautiful park right by a lake. There was a really big lake right near here. And this was right before we broke into small council groups. We'd been meaning to do council the whole time, like smaller groups. And there's Ginger playing. Keep talking, I think. Can you talk?
Ginger? And then they prepared gifts. Go ahead, uh, Yeah, that's it. Good, good job. Then we <laughs> prepared gifts. And here you prepared Ola to give her gift. And you are teaching her that we're reminding her of the four principles. Yes, the four. They're the four. Um, the four vows. When. So we were taught this up, up at the medicine wheel when when the ch the pipe is offered to somebody it's it's offered and then brought back four times before being actually given and and there are four vows or promises um, that you're supposed to be making when that happens the first is I promise to tell the truth the second is, I promise not to hurt anybody. The third is, I promise not to turn away if I'm abused or assaulted. And the fourth is, I promise to do what the people want. This was one of the items in the, in the package, which is a book about our Zen peacemaker lineage going back to Buddha trace from teacher to teacher. So in that way, it's very similar to their culture in that they, they are a, you know, what do you call it, a family ancestor related culture. So well, some of them got that. Eh? Here. <laughs> you are worthy. You are worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about that. <laughs> I guess was it Renee who who offered you are worthy to us? She, I think it was Renee mm -hmm. on one of the first days. Um, she offered that as a sort of motto. Uh, I forget the 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 context of her offering it. Does anyone remember? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tissa Jill. Uh, we each had to um, introduce uh, our partner. We had to pair off and um, get to know another person. And then we had to introduce that other person. And after we introduced that other person, the whole group would have would say, you are worthy. You are worthy. Yes. <laughs> Renee has done She's always the one who comes up with these exercises that like bring us together in the first day or two. And they're so beautiful. Some of them have been incredibly um, powerful too. I remember one time when we were up at, uh, at uh, Bear Lodge Butte, which is also called Devil's Tower. Um, but uh, she had, she had, she had three participants or four participants come up and she had each of them pick up three rocks and she said give each rock a meaning like one is your family one might be like things that are really important to you you know your your work your you know social standing just pick three things that are really important to you and your language you know um, your Zen practice, whatever it is. And then she said, okay, now give me one of those rocks. You pick which one. And she said, this is what happened to us. And she said, but we didn't really get to pick which one. And not only that, but they really, eventually they took all of our rocks. <laughs> 
And it was such a heartbreaking thing. And one of the people who was doing that exercise, I think it was Jennifer Dorn, she started weeping mm. because it was so strong for her. And Renee felt so bad. Oy. But it was such a powerful, powerful exercise, um, you know. Um, yeah. So she's incredible that way. Yeah. <laughs> this is Genro <laughs> telling Cuckoo that he's kicked out of the trip. He was, <laughs> but it was the last day. It was really too late. I was thinking. <laughs> Genro and I are exactly the same age, a month apart. Doesn't he look much older? <laughs> much. Oh. So now we're all very happy. We did the gifts. Everything's happy. Everybody's oh, feeling good and secure in their heart. And then, uh oh, Violet got <laughs> stuck in the elevator. No, no, no. That that didn't happen. This is an after. This was that Violet was riding the elevator in spite of having been stuck in it two days before. I think this is the recovery phase. Yeah, yeah. No. Come on now. Oh, <laughs> try to behave. That's walking. These guys the drove all the way out and back. I should say Clay drove all the yes, way out. <laughs> this was our home. We had two TVs showing Fox News. Peter was often down there watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> this was our meal, typical meal. <laughs> And we, okay, we're almost to the end. We're leaving now, driving away. This is some banana ceremony. I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> Wasu became an official <laughs> banana. <laughs> and could you explain that? So we go to a restaurant. I pick up my glass of water. And that and was under it. It was like, it's a holy place now. We're going to return there. <laughs> And then we went through the center of town and then go ahead we went to heart mountain a few of us went to heart mountain um heart mountain you can see it there in the background um over jitsu joe's the brim of jitsu joe's hat heart mountain was a internment camp during the second world war um Niogen senzaki who is related to our lineage not not directly, but but um, was an inspirational figure for Maizumi Roshi, and um, so uh, there he is, Niogen Senzaki. He was interred there and wrote some beautiful poetry letters and things from from there. He created a zendo up there and wrote little calligraphies on rocks, supposedly, although. Jitsujo was reading to me while we were driving up there that perhaps that was a myth <laughs> and somebody else wrote those little <laughs> calligraphies because there were some haiku poets also interred there and um, uh, maybe a place we were kind of looking and seeing maybe a place that we can do a bearing witness retreat in the future to uh, racism and race and racism in America. That's why I'm carefully studying um, where will I go. <laughs> <laughs> they gave them one train ticket ticket and they could go anywhere they wanted. Oops, what? and then we leave and we go back to fly away and re-enter our own culture. <laughs> and that's how it is here yeah. in America. Yeah. There's yeah. the sugar beet factory or something. And that is, oh, and here, this is arriving back in New York, and that's it. Wow. I'll give you back to yourselves. Thank you, Cuckoo. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me all those pictures. I want to make sure we have time. Uh, Ola, would you like to, would you like to go next? 
Sure. Hi, everybody. Nice to see all the familiar faces and the uh, new faces as well. Um, Thank you, Ginger, for the beautiful music and Peter for recording it so well. It really brought back the, so many memories and moments. Uh, thank you for really capturing these for, for us, for me, especially because I feel it's, you know, so fleeting, so powerful, but so fleeting at the same time. And uh, how to really find that balance where it's where all these um, experiences go. I'm not quite sure. And uh, yeah, I feel very similar uh, to what Jitsu Joe shared, how it's really impossible to give justice to that experience because it was truly so profound on every level for me. And uh, to convey the extent of, of the beauty and, and the depth and the pain and the sorrow that um, I've experienced and been going through and in and out as the days and the moments passed. Um, I'm not sure how will I ever be able to truly express that even back to myself and not also only to, to share with others. Um, so, you know, what can I share? I think I went there, um, I really when they're to listen. I really wanted to do my best to, li to listen, to learn about the ways of, of the ancestors and of our hosts, and as well to um, maybe to understand, to try to understand what's needed today for, for their culture and their people to thrive. And um, one of the things that I feel really, really Talk with me incredibly in a, in a very powerful way was, you know, just kindness and grace, truly kindness and grace that emanated from each and every one of them, despite the suffering that they endured. And they still endure to this day. Um, and, uh, and certainly the deep, deep, deep love and reverence for their ancestors and and for the land, I mean, for all their relations, for all, all that is, um, all that is uh, alive, really, which is, which is all, right? Um, so, uh, you know, we were there with our children, Kenai and Isla, who are six and, and three years old. Um, and Kenai, he asked me, well, mama, so the Lakota say everything is alive. So, is there anything that is not alive? So we've been on this quest ever since, trying to find something that's not alive. <laughs> and we haven't succeeded yet. Uh, but I said to him, hmm, well, maybe, maybe a, a tire. We went through different examples. And he thought for about it. He's like, well, what it's made of? I was like, well, you know, it's some sort of like petroleum product or something. And he's like, well, that's fossilized dinosaurs. That's definitely alive. <laughs> so, so far, you know, so what I really feel that on each and one of us as a family has really been given incredible gifts and um, to gain or maybe broader our understanding, um, you know, of of what it is to be alive, what it is to be part of that that force, that energy, that connection, that spirit, that consciousness that's constantly moving and constantly in motion and constantly really in unity. That's what I have really experienced very, very strongly myself. And, uh, and uh, medicine wheel ceremony, which uh, was so powerful and almost surreal. It was an incredibly hot day and no shade we spend there most of the day and uh, it's almost the images and the feelings would come in and out um for me is sitting in the in that hot sun and listening to the stories that uh, all the all the leaders and the elders shared from different bands 
And, uh, you know, they were all different. They all had different flavor, but they really, it was one song. It was truly one song of creation and on, of beauty and of connection. And these moments incredibly uplifting, um, I felt definitely deeply, deeply touched and privileged by, uh, you know, having a possibility to be there and to to listen, to bear witness and certainly felt like, you know, we were there, a group and maybe about, I don't know, 50, I can't tell really 60 elders and, and uh, you know, Native American who joined. But we, I felt we were joined by so, so, so many more. And that is an amazing blessing um, for me personally, I feel for my children to truly be blessed by the presence of so many great, great spirits. Um, yeah, so I think it's what what I brought strongly, one of the things, oh, there's just so many, is truly that sense of, of sacredness and, and beauty of everything alive and how we are really um, guided and supported by that presence, but all of our relatives, the, the animals, the plant world, the, you know, uh, the earth that carries us with uh, truly every path, every step we take and whatever our path is. And together with that is that incredible, you know, it's a deep, deep sorrow. I, myself, I have not experienced in my personal life a trauma that would be anywhere comparable to what they went through. Not that comparison would make any sense, but uh, I do feel incredible, you know, just privilege. And that's uh, on many levels. And certainly that um, plunge, um, you know, I, uh, it's really hard. I pray that all people all, all people could share that sense of uh, just, you know, goodness and well-being. Because the truth is, my everyday life uh, is really full, filled with goodness and well-being. And for most of the time, I feel really, really well. I don't experience as much of emotional or or any other, uh, you know, trauma. And uh, seeing that, and and I deeply bow to their courage to to really share that, to connect with that, to be able to have enough trust to share it with us, um, you know? And um, yeah, I don't want to take too much time because I probably could go on and on, but uh, yes, um, very, very humbling and, and experienced and uh, a, a little bit like Ginger said too, I certainly brought back way more gifts than I was able to offer. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. Thanks so much. Uh, Nancy and then Ingu. Um, and then we'll try to open it up if anybody else has. I know there's a number of other people here who were, who were there. So hopefully we'll have enough time here. Nancy? Okay, so I want to um, jump off um, sort of where Ola ended and just say that that I too was just amazed that they were so open in sharing with us about their traditions, about their culture, about their sorrows and about their heartbreak, about their history and what continues to happen to them in this world now. Um, this this trip was seeing in the flesh for me almost some of the tragic and some of the amazing history of the lakota i mean the medicine wheel was the amazing the battlefields was the tragic um and and hearing more of the stories so but i want to talk about two things first um one of the things that really struck me was the place of women in the Lakota and in the Native American society. Um, the high regard for women in the Lakota society. The women are the backbone um, 
we had a, a confidential women's gathering um, the day before the medicine wheel. And I can't tell you some things that I would really love to tell you out of that gathering, but um, but we learned much about the role of women. And many times the men talk about the fact that the woman had the task of raising and teaching the boys up until puberty and how important that is before they're turned over to their fathers and, and to the men to learn the men's role. And the role of the grandmother is so seems so key. Um, and they do much of the child story, child rearing, but Violet talks over and over again about her learning about how to be how to be in the world from stories from her grandmother. And she tells amazing stories that have just embedded in them how to be in this world that kids get, that we get, you know, that we understand. Um, men always speak first in the circles. Um, and that was one of the things that that Violet said in the in in our women's group. But there is such a real respect between the men and women. The women are never forgotten in in doing the circles of the of the talking. Um, at the medicine wheel, our Violet was the grandmother that was in the center of the medicine wheel. That this is the the rock, the foundation of the medicine wheel is the grandmothers. And um, I also want to talk about um, Claudia, Manny and Renee's daughter that um, is a still a college student, but she was chosen to represent the babies yet to come, the babies already born, the young women and the women who are missing. There are so many women in this culture, in, in Native American cultures across the country where the women, some of the women just disappear and are never found. Um, and we can only imagine what happens with many of them. Um, so, um, what else do I want to say here? Oh, the other thing was Paula Looking Horse, or Arvel, Arvel's wife, talking about living from your, finding your sacred, from your umbilical cord, finding your sacred sites. That will always stay with me. You know, I thought, wait a minute, I don't know where my sacred sites are. Uh, and then I thought about it and I thought, yes, I do. The Uppsala Cathedral, where every time I go there in Sweden, I sit and cry. That's one of the places. I don't even know why I'm crying when I'm there. But that, just just remembering that. So the other thing that I want to, the second thing that I want to talk about, which was part, why I'm even tearing up going into this, um, that was for Jens and me a part a real part of this was going to Wounded Knee after we left the retreat. Um, we were welcomed at the COVID checkpoint going into Pine Ridge Reservation. Um, as we mentioned Wendell Yellowbull's name and showed our COVID vaccine cards. Um, it was a beautiful sunny day rolling hills, gorgeous countryside. And we were just a day away from the treat, retreat and our hearts and our spirits were wide, wide open. We had come there to honor Jens's mentor, Dr. Alan Ber Berkman. He and his wife, Dr. Barbara Zaylor in 1973 had gone in under fire of US Marshals to bring medical care to the wounded Lakota. 
So we, and, and Alan and Barbara were responsible for much of our international work. Um, so we came there to honor and them and we stopped and looked at, there's a big um, sort of billboard thing that has the history of what happened or at least a version of the history of what happened at Wounded Knee on it. And I, I, I started to feel caught in a vortex at that point that was trying to pull all kinds of scattered energy that was just flying around in the air every which way and to try and haul it down into some dark haunted place in this land, in this place. I, I, vis I physically, viscerally wanted to run away from the energy in that place. And it felt like it was just a pure will that kept me, both my spirit and my heart and me physically present in that space. Um, there was a wiry, disheveled Lakota man who approached us smelling of alcohol. And I say this wanting to come to that, that statement with a not knowing and without judgment of him, because I don't know what brought him to that moment with us. Um, he was asking if he could show us around. Um, he pointed to the cemetery up the hill on the other side of the road from the massacre site. I'm going to read this because I'm not sure that I can say it without starting to cry. We thanked him, gave him a small amount of money, and said we were fine on our own. We drove up to the cemetery where all the Lakota leaders and chief's names were written on a six foot or so high granite spire. I read every one of those names. We walked around the wire fence surrounding the graves, offering tobacco and prayers in every direction. Our same guy all of a sudden was by our side and singing and began singing a, look, a prayer in Lakota. Tears came come now as I was writing this out that I couldn't that I couldn't shed when we were there. We drove away not having been able to do anything about honoring Ellen and Barbara, but just to be with the grisly, dark, haunted energy that's in that place. I've never been in any place like that before. So I want to end with a quote from Wendell Yellowbull that will, I will never forget. He said, we are prisoners of war, talking about his people. War, a war that continues to this, way, this day in so many other ways than with guns and cannons and soldiers and warriors with systemic racism as the perpetrator of abuse for a people who simply want to own their land and get their land back and maintain their culture and their language and their ways, their wonderful whole ways. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Ingu, would you like to share? Well, I think, you know, I, I just want to say thank you, Nancy, and thank you, everybody. Um, I think you all did a wonderful, you know, um, job of sharing the depth and, and uh, you know, the beauty and, and the, the sorrow that, that is part of going out there. And... Um, yeah, we did it uh, the, two years ago, the last time that we did a retreat there, we did a ceremony with, with, um, with Manny, Renee, 
Violet, but also uh, relatives, a group that's called Hawk 1892, which is um, descendants of the Wounded Knee Massacre. Um, and we did a, a f a, an incredible ceremony there at the gravesite. Um, where, and, and it was a lot like the Gate of Sweet Nectar. F it, it was feeding, feeding the, the spirits um, and uh, offering tobacco and prayers and, and, uh, and food. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a p powerful place. And th this trip, you know, was a little different in, in that we were in a really beautiful place. Um, I felt compelled to take Jitsu Joe through <laughs> um, Crow. The, the, uh, w we were down near um, where Little Bighorn, where the, the greasy grass, and I took her through Crow Agency to show her what it looks like, like when you're on the reservation, you know, you can see boarded up houses, poverty, and, and that wasn't really a part of this trip you know, um, so much. Uh, although we heard about it, we didn't see it. Um, uh, and, and that's a powerful part of the story. I, I, for those of you who've been, who were on the, the last time the, before this, when we were on the land, we, we ended that retreat on the reservation. Um, uh, the, and, and, uh, that was, the Cheyenne River Reservation, where uh, an Eagle Butte, which is you know very very impoverished and in a in a hurt hard place, so um, uh, it definitely brought home you know w what a lot of these stories kind of point at, and the suffering that continues to go on out there is, is big. Um, so. Uh, and, you know, for me, though, this retreat was opening up with ceremony was such a wonderful way I, to, to come together. And, and I thought that the group, in a way, it, it really made all of us, it brought us together in, 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 in a strong and powerful way um, and, and helped us to deal with things like no Wi-Fi and, and <laughs> the other inconveniences that that sometimes might have been popping up, you know, only ch even though they had a complete menu at this place, all they would serve us was cheeseburgers. <laughs> You'd order like a salad and they'd give you a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and I think that when I, when I left, there was something that I read from uh, Sa uh, Sa Sa Yo, uh, a 12th century po poet and it said wherever you go that's where you must purify your heart and that was kind of my motto on this trip was you know that's the work that we do when we're bearing witnesses do you just keep you know listening purifying your heart how, how like one of the questions that comes up is how do you purify your heart you know and and I think bearing witness um, being together in community, certainly with children, I, uh, I, I love having the children there. And it was, you know, th th these folks are our family. They, w we've been doing this for a long time together. And, and for me, the last time I traveled before COVID was to plan the 20, uh, it would have been the 2020 uh, plunge. That's when I first met Jeff. He had just come on board to, to ZPI, and and we met and we planned out going to uh, the Medicine Wheel actually, um, and uh, so uh, then everything shut down, you know, and and it was like dramatically <laughs> uh, shut down. So um, even though we did the virtual plunge, it was so wonderful to uh, be with people and see their legs. <laughs> I said, Jitsu Joe, look, you have a body. <laughs> look at that leg. <laughs> so that was also li like a big healing 
part of this trip was to be together again, you know, um, so sweet and wonderful. And to be with Violet and, and Manny and Renee and Wendell and Rowdy and Renata, Ren Renata and, and Claudia. And, you know, it was, it was so sweet. One day we were, we, we, we were kicked out of the site that we thought we were going to. And um, we ended up up in the woods, like by the side of a highway. And I thought, well, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't like paradise, but it was really, really beautiful. It was so beautiful. And, um, and it was, it, you know, it, it was l l like one of those things of not knowing and everything works out. You know, you think, but we were joined by the other sweet thing that happened that day was that there was a family of people and I forget what tribe they were from, but they were, they were kind of fishing down by the creek and they said, Hey, could we come up and join you? You know? Um, and they did, you know, and, and it was so wonderful and sweet to have them there just like passing in and, pa you know, and and you know that's the way these plunges are like we pass in and out of each other's lives for a little bit you know but it's so sweet to see you know and to be together um and to it gives life fullness and richness you know um and so i'm happy to see all of you again right now mark's happy smile <laughs> yeah all of you it was Anna there you are she she was very briefly the leader of the order of disorder <laughs> or she still is I don't know we, we don't know <laughs> and um, yeah it's good to see you all and I really appreciated it and and next year will be another wonderful miracle Thanks, Angu. Um, Barbara posted a question, I think, in the chat. I don't see it any longer, but... Uh, yeah, about Maggie. Yeah, um, asking how Maggie... Uh, Angu, do you happen to know the latest? I know that Maggie went back to Sacramento for, for uh, a stay, not because of, uh, of anything going wrong, but... So Maggie Bobtail Bear is the... Um, is the grandchild of Manny and Renee and was severely, severely burned in a campfire accident a couple years ago, or maybe a year ago only. Um, yeah. And uh, was spent the better part of the year in a children's hospital in Sacramento doing skin grafts and all kinds of things. And is doing, so you saw pictures of, of uh, who I was playing the harmonica to was Rowdy. That's Rowdy's big, um, big sister. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, that was. So the last I heard, though, she was back in Sacramento, but because they were going to do some more surgeries, skin graft surgeries that were just to help with um, hand movement and things like that, but is recovering well. Um, uh, you know, and, and it's going to be a long and difficult road to recovery, but yeah, thank you for asking, Barbara. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. And thanks, Ingu. Uh, we, we have a, a, a few more minutes, and I'm even willing to go over if, if, if we need. Uh, anyone else who's on, on the call here, um, uh, Mark or uh, Jens or uh, Ara or Anna? Or Bob. Or Bob's Bob's here too, and uh, anybody else have something to share? Please just go ahead and unmute and uh, and take a couple of minutes and and, and share, or uh, if you're inclined. I, I I'll go, I'll go. I have I have something very brief. When I got back, of course, all my friends were asking me, you know, what it was like. And I said something to 
effective. It was transformational. It was life altering. And then, of course, they wanted me to explain why. And I, I couldn't. Um, they wanted, they were expecting, they had an expectation that I was going to give them this big moment of Zen, that there was, be, there would be an awakening and, and, you know, there, there wasn't, but there was, um, still a change, m many changes for me, a lot of changes, um, many of which were really, uh, very personal. I'm a, I, I, as a personality, I always want to make things better. I always want to, you know, correct injustice. And, you know, when you sit and you listen to the history of injustice that's still going on today, and you know, nothing I can do about it. Um, and, and so that's, it was a bearing witness retreat, but it was also a not knowing retreat. And, uh, I, and I have to s briefly say, I had one friend who actually got kind of angry at me because she really wanted that Zen moment. And she I was telling her the stories that I'd heard. And she said, I already know all that. And I said, okay, <laughs> you know all that. But um, you can't know because it wasn't unless it was your experience, you can't know any of this. And, and being w with those people, being with the elders, as well as sharing it with all of the Zen people, uh, the Zens, as they called us, um, that was it. Thanks, Mark. I just point out that um, that uh, when you said there's nothing I can do about it, that's a kind of knowing. <laughs> and you did, or you yeah. did, yeah, you did something about it by going there, you know. And, right. and there's more. There's more. It'll follow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. We have another min couple of minutes. Anybody else have? Uh... Anna, you, oh, look at you using your electronic hand. Where are you? Go ahead, Anna. <laughs> Use my microphone. Um, that was, the whole experience was, um, you know, I told uh, my husband, I said, I need to go up and see trees. And I really, uh, yeah, and meet, meet new people. And the weird thing is that when I met, you know, all of you who are on the, on this thing, it's like, I, yeah, I feel like I've known you my whole life and I know that I have, and I really miss you. And in my mind, like every day I think, and I wish I could just, well, in my mind, I replay uh, the whole experience over and over and over again. Um, and I look forward to the next one. Anyway, I, yeah, I just, I've gushed uh, how, yeah, I met my family up there and, uh, you know, after the, after the medicine wheel, um, you know, I know that a big part of it, uh, Jeff was not knowing what the next plan was and then hearing that, well, we're all going to go to a campground. So there was a car driving down and I just jumped in with them and it was, uh, it was, you probably thought it was bananas. It was a couple, uh, oh my word, uh, Regina and, um, Oh my word, I'm uh, blanking on his name, but they were Crow. And so I just jumped in their truck with them and went down and uh, that gave me a great opportunity to talk with them before you all got there and uh, became good friends with Cedric. And so I'm excited to do the horse trip with him uh, coming up. And yeah, I mean, that's open to everybody. Um, it was just a profound, experience and it still is and I really appreciate it and I'm extremely grateful to this group and um yeah looking forward to seeing your legs again hopefully <laughs> soon
Maybe one more before we wrap, Bob. Is it was were you wait? Okay. Does anyone who wasn't with us have a question or uh, uh, something? Thanks, Angu. That's perfect. I think everyone who's spoken, um, my heart swells, my mind expands. Uh, you've you've given words to it and 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 not soiled it. And um, I continue to live the experience. I continue to listen. Now I listen through books and other ways. I'm ready to come back. I thank so much the opportunity to be in such an extraordinary and small group where we were living together because we were together all the time. So I felt a closeness and an ability to make contact that was somewhat different from my experience in 2015 at Pine Ridge. It was deeper in a way. Um, and the connection to searching my own ancestors has opened for me. And um, the depth of understanding of the Lakota being prisoners of war and why finally at 74, I find out why I could not locate people, native people until now. And my heart breaks and opens. And, and, and it was also just personally extraordinary for me to be there with Peter and my son Hale to have us together there and, and in this group of multi-generational people. We had a meal on the way back in Billings and the waitress came up to us and said, hi, my name is Jazz. I don't know, but I've been sort of listening to you guys talking to each other and you are this multi, what's going on? Can I sit down and talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> so it felt like it was continuing. It continues and I can't wait to go back next year. Thank Jazz you. Jazz was a boudoir photographer. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's going to learn from her. Yes, really. <laughs> I have so much to learn. <laughs> Thank you, Aura. Thank you, Aura. Well, uh, we're at the, we're at the end of the time that we that we committed to, so perhaps we should end and let everybody move on with their day. Thank you for everybody who attended, everybody who shared. I hope this was stimulating. Uh, hopefully, some of the people who were on the call today who weren't able to attend this year, might consider joining us next year. Um, and, uh, and, I, and I hope uh, as a result of this, maybe now you would see a reason to do so. So. And I'd like to dedicate the merits of, of us coming together and doing, doing this meeting today to our, our Lakota relatives, to Violet Catches, to Manny and Renee Iron Horse, um, and to their families, and to, and to Wendell Tubles 